Wait, hold up. How are Dan and Nikki Filippi gonna claim that they're pro life but end their dog's life when he was simply defending himself? Honestly, it sounds like to me that at this point, they're just pro death. Yo, what's going on, YouTube? It's Iron Steph, and you guys, we got some dark tea to spill today. First, we have the Shane Dawson cat scandal, then, we had the Brooke Houts dog scandal, and now we got this. Hi, guys. <laughs> I feel, um, awkward. I'm sure that you've all heard about the controversy that's been going down since the beginning of the month regarding Dan and Nikki Filippi, Filippe, or whatever their name is. You know what? I'm just gonna call them Dan and Nikki Filippi because they honestly piss me off. I haven't heard about these two YouTubers since the dog incident went down, and since then, I've done some research, and these people are even more disgusting than you might have thought. So with that being said, for today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at Dan and Nikki and exposing the dark truth about these two YouTubers. But just before we get into this if y'all can leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already it truly would mean a lot to me so that more people can see this video and be informed with the disgusting action of these two youtubers All right, so on May 3rd, Nikki Filippi uploaded a YouTube video titled we have some really sad news and in this video Dan and Nikki announced that they had recently euthanized their nine-year-old bull terrier named Bowser and for those who don't know what euthanizing means it's essentially a way of sick or injured individuals in a painless way. For example, if a dog has heart failure or an uncurable brain disease, and this is a way to quote unquote put them out of their misery. Or the more common example, if the dog is a vicious monster, like as seen in the novel or movie Cujo, where the dog gets rabies and kills people in the neighborhood. And look, I'm not against using dogs, okay? My uncle a few years ago had to use his dog because he had cancer and a few other bodily issues, and it was just the best thing for the dog. But the specific reason as to why Dan and Nikki use their dog is just flat out stupid. These YouTubers decided to end their dog's life after he bit their one year old son. But the thing is, it wasn't even that aggressive of a bite. It was a simple nip just because the son was trying to take food out of the dog's mouth. And not only that, but their son was pulling on the dog's ears so hard that it gave him a cauliflower ear. So essentially this dog nipped the kid in self defense. And Nikki even admits that what Bowser did wasn't an attack, it was an act of self defense. It wasn't like Bowser attacked Logan. Just like you said, it was like they defensive. Yeah, they Logan tried to take food from him. And I want y'all to keep in mind that this is a dog with a traumatic childhood. When the dog was just a puppy, it was attacked by another bull terrier, which belonged to Nikki's parents. Well, and Bowser so. was attacked when he was a puppy, and we never really talked about that very much. But that was like a that was a big turning point in Bowser's personality. So prior to the attack, <clears throat> Bowser could go to dog parks. Bowser was just calmer in general. And then after the attack, it just triggered something in him. And he was attacked by another bull terrier, actually my parents' old bull terrier. The two YouTubers said that after this incident, Bowser developed an aggressive side that only became worse. And this is the reason that the as their dog. But what I find interesting and quite contradicting is what Dan says happened after their son was pulling onto Bowser's ear. He, uh, he, he grabbed onto Bowser's ear and Bowser didn't do anything. You know, he's, he's that calm, gentle giant that lives in my house, but you know, Logan got him so good that um, if you know what uh, an MMA fighter looks like or a wrestler, they have their cauliflower ear. Yeah, I don't get it. They claim Bowser is aggressive, but Dan just said that Bowser didn't do anything when he was given the cauliflower ear because he's a quote unquote calm, gentle giant. So make up your mind. Was this dog a monster or a cute, cuddly guy? I really don't understand these two. Like, I barely even need to do the exposing because Dan and Nikki are exposing themselves. They even go on to say that their son Logan was the one who was attacking and harassing Bowser. It was Logan in Bowser's space and Logan yeah. couldn't help but grab at him and try to steal things from him and try to interrupt him when he was eating or scream at him. And so it was almost kind of unfair to Bowser because it was like, he's a good dog. The fact that this dog had trauma, plus the fact that they had this dog for nine years and it wasn't a problem until now, plus the fact that their son was the aggressor, it really disgusts me that they decided to end his life. It sounds like to me that the dog wasn't the problem. The real problem here are the parents it grew up with and the environment that it was surrounded in. And what disgusts me even more is that just before they killed the dog, they had the audacity to have a photo shoot with him. And what's even crazier to me is that in that photo shoot, Bowser was sitting inches away from the sun. So according to Dan and Nikki's logic, this dog is so dangerous that it needs to be put down 
but he could be sitting inches away from their son for a picture. I'm sure that this dog would have been perfectly fine if it grew up in a different home. Now, my question about this whole thing was, did this family even consider putting this dog up for adoption? And according to Nikki, they did talk to the Humane Society where they did discuss adoption. We contacted the Humane Society and we had a long discussion with someone over there and basically she made it clear to us that rehoming Bowser was not an option because he had been with us from birth, basically. I mean, Dan was his, he was Dan's spirit animal. Dan was his spirit human, you know, so they were bonded. All right, so they claim that they talked to the Humane Society where they were told that adoption isn't an option. But you know what I find interesting is that according to an article on today.com, the Humane Society of the United States told today that the nationwide organization had no involvement with the case. In addition, Dan and Nikki live in Nashville and the Nashville Humane Society said they had no records of Dan and Nikki Filippi and were not aware of any conversations about the euthanizing about Bowser. Now, this is very interesting because if they're a local humane society and the nationwide humane society claim that they have no records of speaking to Dan and Nikki, then are they lying about this? And I personally don't buy that the humane society would say adoption isn't an option because there will always be someone out there who is willing to adopt a dog. And considering that Nikki has over 1 million subscribers on her channel, it wouldn't be that hard if she made a video asking if anyone wanted to adopt this dog. She would easily find at least one person. Honestly, what I find sad about this entire situation is that the reason they killed Bowser was because of a mental disorder he developed. Also, this whole euthanizing thing seems really sketchy because not only is there evidence that they lied about talking to the Humane Society, but some random guy from Australia came to do this. So the guy that came over to help us with Bowser's passing to put Bowser down. He's from Australia. Honestly, to me, that sounds like some hit type of shit. Like they're from Nashville, they're from America. Why couldn't they find someone local to do this? Probably, I should know for a fact, because it's morally wrong. Another thing that seemed really sketchy to me is the amount of times that you would fake cry in that video. I want y'all to look at this cup and pay close attention to Nikki's facial expressions. When you make that kind of a decision or you make the appointment, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now, if you thought that seemed fake, just take a look at this. We all had the best day together, so. <sighs> yeah, so. Wow, if that doesn't scream go, I don't know what does. I'm actually really pissed off about this situation because if Dan and Nikki were better parents, seek psychological help for the dog, and prevented their one-year-old son from attacking it, this all would have been avoided. I also found a video from over two years ago of Dan taunting Bowser. Oh my God. <laughs> And I found another video where Dan gave Bowser a shoe and was ordering him to kill it. Shake it around. Kill the shoe. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. So these were only two clips that I found, but I'm sure if I really went digging, I could find dozens more. And it just goes to show how ironic is it that Dan and Nikki ended this dog's life because he was apparently too aggressive. He was a monster. But they're the ones who raised them to become this way. They had this dog for nine years and it seems like their son was the problem in this situation. Honestly, I've never heard about these two YouTubers until this situation went down. But since then, I've done some more digging and like I said, these two are even more disgusting than you might think. All right, so if you thought that these two YouTubers couldn't get any worse, well, you're in for a ride. Because Dan and Nikki gave up adoption for the sole reason that they couldn't exploit this child on YouTube. Yeah, that's right. They were going to adopt the child until they found out that the laws in Taiwan prevent them from uploading pictures and videos of the child for at least one year. Thailand has a its own law that's unique to it that um, after you are, you pick up your child and they're your child, you are not allowed to talk about them or share any images, photos, videos, anything about them online for a year. Wow, textbook case about what people strongly dislike and fear about family YouTube channels. It seems like to me that they wanted to adopt this child for the sole reason of getting views and profit, not for giving a child a better life and giving it parents it doesn't have. So. I mean Nikki's got a YouTube channel and we share a whole lot. Wait, it's... hold on, hold on, hold on. When that hit, we literally were like, Yeah. What? Like, we literally were like, I, wait, what? <laughs> 
So we're like going around the house. We're like trying to figure out how this could work. Like hashtag baby blur face. Like blur what are we face. gonna do? <sighs> I really don't understand these two. Like it's just one year. One year they can't put this child on the internet and that's apparently a big issue for them. I'm about 20 years old. I've had a mom my whole life. Have I put her on my YouTube channel? No. And I've done just fine. I think if I haven't put my parents on my YouTube channel my whole life, these people can manage not putting a baby, a literal child, for one year on their platform. Anyways, after this all went down, they looked into adopting a child from Korea. However, their adoption agency told them that because of their huge social media presence, they wouldn't easily be approved. And now that I know why they didn't pull through with the adoption in Thailand and Korea, it makes sense to me why they decided to have a photo shoot with Bowser before they ended his life. It's actually disgusting. YouTube and this online platform that Dan and Nikki has, has corroded their brains and has only made them see views, money, and that's it. And it seems like their first priority with everything is, will this get views? How much money will we get out of it? Obviously social media is their job and I understand that, but there is a certain point when enough becomes enough. All right, so I wanna address a few more things, but for the sake of not making this video way too long, I'm gonna go through them kind of quick. In addition to Nikki wrongfully putting down her dog and wanting to adopt a child for the purpose of education, it turns out that she's an anti sir and anti -masker. And look, I completely understand that everyone has different opinions when it comes to this sort of stuff because regarding anything in the world, there's always a good side and a bad side. But Nikki's been spreading some information which really could be detrimental to children and teenagers watching her videos. In one video titled My Virus Story, she explains a virus that she had about 15 years ago when she was in high school and how she recovered from it, taking in high doses of vitamin C. And essentially in this video, she's trying to explain to everyone that instead of getting the vaccine for to take in high doses of vitamin C. I so believe in vitamin C high dose therapy. I have personal experience and you guys know how it is. Once you have personal experience with something working, you're like, no one can tell me differently. And so if you are someone that's just sick with anything or you end up coming down with 19 or you know a family member, I want to say to you to bring this up. This is worth looking at with the fact that we're we're throwing around ideas of all these other medications and then vaccines and a lot of these things like the potential side effects are way worse than the potential side effects of vitamin C. And although this type of therapy might have helped her 15 years ago, this virus that we're going under now and that we're experiencing is completely different than what she experienced. And although this therapy might have its benefits, this therapy is not the same as the vaccine for this virus and does not offer the same protection. Because if that was the case and Nikki is right about what she's saying, uh, this is the best cure for the virus, she would be a billionaire right now. And you wouldn't have companies like Pfizer and Moderna giving out vaccines to people. And the last thing that I wanna address is her comments regarding masks. In this video here, she discussed her thoughts about wearing masks, and if you've seen it, you can tell that she's strongly against wearing masks. How do I word this? Similar to the similar to the vaccine thing, guys. It's not that I'm anti-mask. It's not that I'm like, nobody should be wearing masks. It's that, you know, I had this realization maybe like, a month ago. The mental health aspect of this mask situation is not going to be good. I don't love wearing a mask. I think that science and the medical system in general has a long track record of speaking from a place of authority and assuredness at the moment that they're in while disregarding the past mistakes that they've made as a system. I really don't understand like what's so hard about wearing them. I get it. You might not be scared of the virus because you're young, but Nikki, not everything is about you. It's about other people who are older, obese, unhealthy, have some type of problem with their body, which makes them more susceptible to developing serious symptoms. Like I wear a mask when I go out, not necessarily because I am scared of getting the virus and what it's gonna do to me, but it's because I don't wanna be giving this virus to other people, like my friends, my family, and even just random people I encounter. People are anti are selfish. That's really what they are. They're only thinking about themselves. And something else that really bothered me about her mask comments is this clip here. It makes me sad that my baby will go out and most of the time doesn't see full faces. My response to that is that it's better her son can't see people's faces because they're wearing masks and not that he can't see their faces because they 
Right, from the virus. Like, boo-hoo, your son can't see people's lips and their boogers hanging down from their nose. I think he's gonna turn out just fine. And again, I completely understand that Nikki has her own beliefs, and that is fine. But posting these videos online really had no good intention and it's only going to make this virus get worse and take even longer for us to return to some form of normality. Alright anyway guys, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. But if you guys are interested, there is a change.org petition going around that wants to demonetize Nikki's channel. I'm really curious about what you guys think about Dan and Nikki because there's a lot. Like there is a lot of stuff, honestly in my opinion. I don't think they're ever going to come back from this. I feel like they're just way too much stuff and it's only been like a week and we've uncovered so much. So I feel like Dan and Nikki, you can say bye bye to your social media career. I'm worried for the other dog that they're currently raising and their son. If you guys did enjoy my video and the breakdown of everything that's been going on, be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video around. Let's get everyone talking. Sign that petition. Let's demonetize their channel because we can't have people like these two on YouTube. This is not what the platform's about. It's really not. All right, anyway guys, it's officially gonna do it for this video. So until next time, it's been Ivan Steph. Peace. Philip pee pee, that's, that's actually kind of a funny one, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like I'm five, but it's still funny.